So here we are, day seven of Woman's Wisdom with Mrs. Menopause, talking about menopause or weight gain. So I'm hoping by now you realise that this menopause weight gain you're experiencing isn't necessarily just about exercising more and eating less. You can see that there's so much more involved in the process, especially when we're going through the menopause. And my uh, my dream really is for you guys to really understand that, you know, just be a little bit gentler with yourself, be a little bit gentler with your body and understand the process that's going on. And a lot of the time your body is trying to work with you and not against you. And if we can see it from a different point of view and come from a place of love, rather than from a place of, you know, whipping ourselves and telling ourselves we must do better and getting down on ourselves. In my experience, that's going to uh, serve you better, really. It's going to it's going to give you long, longer term um, results, which I'm sure is what you want. So I've really enjoyed looking about looking at. Oh, my God, I cannot get my words out today. I have really enjoyed looking into uh, the liver again. And especially in relation to menopause. And um, for me personally, I've, I've had a few like, oh, yeah, of course, you know, uh, a couple of aha moments. And why is the liver so important? You know, it's an, it's an amazing organ. It really is. And, uh, you know, it's our largest organ. It works really hard. And, you know, the thing with liver is it, it's a, it detoxifies. One of the things it does, it detoxifies our body from toxins from um, our environment um, and and what we put into our body and if it works too much and then that's when we're getting to get the problems and it's kind of like you know our livers and our body is kind of like a car isn't it we need if we've got a car we service it regularly you know we uh, get a regular MOT where maybe we give it a good clean out every now and again inside or out and uh and if you imagine like with a car, I don't know if you've ever done this, I have put diesel in the petrol car. It doesn't work. It doesn't work and it's expensive. <laughs> but it's that kind of thing. It's thinking about what we're putting in our body and the impact it can have on us. I found a couple of quotes that I just wanted to read out to you, which I thought really kind of summarise what we're talking about today. It says, detoxing and cleansing is all about resting and caring from your body from the inside out to give it a well-deserved break from the stresses of a day-to-day life. And I quite like that. That sounds quite gentle. Uh, Also, if your body is constantly overworked and stressed, some complications arise. You might feel out of sync, have irritated skin, different aches and pains or digestive issues. Just like you desperately need those two weeks weeks off from your job sometimes, so does your body needs a break from break every now and again too. And I kind of think that kind of sums it up a little bit, kind of what we're looking to achieve in today's talk. And uh, this is something that Patrick Holford said, and it really struck me. It says most of us are vertically ill. That is, we are upright but just don't feel great. So what does the liver really actually do? Um, I'm sure we've, you've all heard the uh, term detox and I know especially in January perhaps after you know uh, Christmas we hear uh, it in the diet industry you know detox this detox that do we actually really need to do a detox what does that mean um, the body the liver is really efficient at actually detoxing um, what it needs to detox when it's working function when it's working properly well, when the problems come is when actually there's, you know, it can only work so fast. And if there's too much coming in for it to deal with, then it can't process all those toxins. And this is when we we, we have the problems. Um, but the, the liver is really important for not just detoxification. It has an impact on other areas as well. Um, when it when it detoxes, it do, detoxes in two phases, and what the liver actually does is actually converting fat soluble toxins into water soluble toxins, which we can then remove from the body uh, through urine or through um, through breathing as well. It breaks down and removes excess hormones, and we've talked about this in the past few days about how being estrogen dominant can cause us more symptoms. 
So the uh, liver is it plays a part in um, breaking down and then re removing these excess hormones from the body. The liver also produces bile, uh, and this is stored in your gallbladder. Um, and bile, um, it's, it's another way of kind of getting rid of toxins, but it, it's, it, it's really important in our digestive system. And what it does, it does it emulsifies fat so our body can then use them. Um, so it kind of, if you imagine, um, it's kind of like fairy liquid. So if you've got, uh, you've done washing up and you've got grease that sits on top of the water, if you put some fairy liquid in, it breaks it all up and, and it all becomes one. And that's kind of what your gallbladder does. And also, uh, sorry, what bile does, which is stored in your gallbladder. And also what bile does actually is remove excess cholesterol from your, um, from your body, which is super important. And especially as we're getting older and going through menopause because our cholesterol levels can rise. Uh, it's also very uh, important for our blood sugar balance. Uh, when we talked about blood sugar, I talked about how our liver stores glycogen. Uh, and then when the liver, when the insulin triggers a release of glycogen from the liver to be turned into um, glucose for our body to use. So if the liver's not working properly, it can have an impact on our blood sugar balances. And that in turn just... You know, it's like a domino effect. You'll just knock on to other systems in the body. So do we need to detox? Do we really need to detox? Is it a fatty thing? And um, in my opinion, you know, uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not a fan anymore of really strict, harsh detoxes, only because they're really hard to keep to. In my experience and clients' experience, you go on it and you last maybe a week, oh, if you're lucky, maybe two weeks. But then what happens? People then tend to go back to their old eating pattern. So, yes, you may get really good results from doing quite a, you know, a harsh detox. I call it harsh because it's, it's, it's quite, a, it can be cause quite horrible symptoms as well. So I think there's different ways you can do it. And that also depends on your personality type as well, doesn't it? These days, I think we are bombarded with so many different types of um, toxins from different areas, from you know, from pollutants, from our environment, from the food we eat, and and I think perhaps then sometimes our liver has too much more than it can cope with, and it can cause problems. Um, but one thing that I think is really really interesting for you guys is when we have this excess of toxins. Your body, if it can't, if the liver can't process it, your body's like, well, what do I do with the with these toxins? What can I do with them that are not going to cause damage? It says, right, I need to store these. I need to store these toxins away from the vital organs, and the place it does that is in our body fat. So, our body, if all the time we have these toxins or these these um, these these things in our body that we that are not helping our body at all all the time we have that in our body our body has to store them safely in body fat and all the time we have that it's going to be much harder for our body to lose the body fat because what will happen if you lose that body fat quickly all those toxins can be released and if again if your liver can't keep up with the with the processing you're going to feel like rubbish so a better way to do it is to start to slowly clean up your act, if you like, start to help your body and support your liver. And then you may find your weight loss comes off easier. Um, so that's interesting, right? It's another, another interesting thing to kind of to take into account of how your body is, is actually trying to work with you. So what are the benefits? What are the benefits of kind of cleaning up your act, if you like, of, um, of following some of the steps that I'm going to share with you in a minute. Um, clearer skin, clearer eyes, uh, clearer thinking, less aches and pains, less bloating. Um, you'd sleep better because your liver processes a lot overnight. And if it's having to process all that stuff that it's, be, it, it's got to process, it can actually disturb your sleep. And if you look at traditional Chinese medicine and look at their clock, 
each each time uh, relates to a certain area of the body and between two and three I think it's two and three it's either one or two or two and three relates to your liver which is a really which is really interesting because that's the time lots of people wake up in the middle of the night so there's lots and lots of reasons why we should um, clean up our liver and does that mean you need to do a strict detox if you want to you could I would do it under some kind of supervision with somebody that knows what they're talking about um, and be prepared if you're going to do it hard and fast that you're going to have some time you're going to feel crap that a lot of people have um, you know flu like symptoms cold like symptoms but they only last for a few days and it may be something you want to do personally I think it's a, a gentler approach would be to start adding in some foods and supplements perhaps that's uh, that support your body support your liver and get it working better that way and then slowly start to remove the uh the foods and drinks that that are adding to your toxic load toxic is quite a harsh word i'm trying to think of a better word to use but i can't think of one right now so um i've got some um ideas here and of course i'm going to put these in in the post as well so you'll be able to see what these are so i'm going to, just going to read these off because there's quite a few here i've got um eat nuts and seeds because these contain selenium which is one of the nutrients needed for your detoxification onions and garlic contain glutathione which is again essential for your liver increase your fruit and vegetables um it's going to have they have high fiber content as well as water vitamins and minerals you know there's not much here i'm going to tell you that i'm sure you don't haven't heard of before but it's always good to hear it isn't it uh cruciferous vegetables broccoli cabbage watercress brussels sprouts those kind of things key to liver detoxification lots of water to help flush out the body keep it hydrated um, I'm sure you know the pee test, you know, make, look, make sure you know your, pit, your pee is uh, straw coloured and that's how you know how well you're hydrated. Lots of brightly coloured fruits and vegetables, organic if you can. These contain lots of antioxidants that help combat the damage of the free radicals caused by, um, by the toxins. Fat is your friend, so uh, consume essential fatty acids. Uh, these are found in avocado, um, oily fish, salmon, olives, coconut oil. And these um, oils, they also kind of lubricate, lubricate the colon as well. So just keeps everything moving, which is what we want. Remember, we spoke about yesterday about needing to keep these bowels moving to eliminate any excess hormones. Bitter greens are fantastic. Any bitters are very good for, um, for helping your uh, liver detoxify and to work much more efficiently things like um, rocket that kind of thing um what else we've got here amino acids which are found um in fish and chicken and eggs again really good for the detoxification process if that's something you eat lots of fiber if but up to the level that your uh, digestion can handle it too much fiber for some people is not good so it's finding that that point for you that works um and then we get into reducing your exposure to these toxins. So things like uh, processed foods, caffeine puts a big load. I'm sorry, I love my coffee too, but caffeine, uh, including chocolate and Coke and that kind of stuff. These all, these are all quite big toxins that your, your liver has to deal with. Um, refined sugars, food additives, and yes, alcohol now i'm not saying you have to give up all of this stuff um but i'm going to talk more about the foods tomorrow and about how we put all this together and my take on uh how to eat during the menopause i've put here as well get sweaty use your imagination whatever you like you could sauna you can steam room you can exercise you can whatever whatever you need to do to get sweaty you know, use your skin. Your skin is a massive detoxify. Oh goodness, can't speak. Detoxification organ. So if your liver's working and releasing all this stuff, let's get it out through any way that's possible. Skin brushing as well. Dry skin brushing, fantastic for your skin, for your lymph system. Uh, you know, it just makes your skin feel. Good. Dry skin skin brushing as well is a really good one to do. Um, your skin is a 
uh, your biggest detoxification organ. Is it your biggest? I'm not sure, but it's, it is big. <laughs> it, um, and, and if you skin brush, it can really help get these uh, toxins moving out of your body. It's great for your skin. Your skin will feel amazing. It's good for your lymph system, uh, lymph drainage. And also, as we're getting older... Um, our skin turnover is a bit more sluggish like everything else it slows down so any t any, any exfoliation we can do is going to just really help keep your skin glowing um, and the last one I put on is exercise and breathe learning how to breathe is a really good tool for detoxification it's not going to counteract your uh, caffeine and alcohol consumption though <laughs> Uh, and exercise, you know, exercise that goes back to getting sweaty, getting, getting, getting the body moving would be a great thing to do as well. Uh, there are some herbs you can take with um, to help the liver. Uh, just any herbs you take, please run them by someone, a professional, so you just make sure they're not contraindicated with anything else. And these, again, there's no point taking these herbs if you've not made, made any changes to your diets. It's not really going to do much, to be honest with you. But you could try milk thistle, dandelion root, and uh, globe artichoke. They're some of the more well-known herbs. You could go to see a herbalist, uh, and they would be able to help you with that as well. So that's talking about the liver. Again, I've only got 10 minutes, and it, these are big subjects that I'm trying to just keep really simple for you guys to realise how your whole body is working and, and you know how to approach it, approach your menopause symptoms and approach this menopausal weight gain. So tomorrow, day eight, is going to be talking about food. We're going to talk about you know, what's the best thing to eat? What do you eat? Do you eat carbs? Do you not? Do you eat uh, uh, late at night? Do you not? All those kind of things. I'm going to pick out the main points and we're going to do 10 minutes tomorrow. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.